Huh? What are you doing in my swamp? Hello everybody, this is Overboy, and I'm going to be doing my ranking for my top 10 most anticipated movies of 2022. Um, so, for this ranking, uh, I'll be talking about 10 movies that I'm looking forward to the most this year. Um, I know that the release dates could change and stuff, some movies could be delayed. Uh, it's always unpredictable with the way the world is right now. But, um... These are 10 that I think will get released this year that I'm really looking forward to. Before I get into it, I wanted to give a few honorable mentions that I wasn't able to fit on here. Um, one is Avatar 2, which, if it even gets released this year. That, that movie's been delayed so many times over the last 13 years, ever since the first one came out. So if Avatar 2, even it exists and actually happens and that that's one of the honorable mentions and it would be in my top 10 but I just don't believe that it's ever going to happen it or it doesn't seem like it so that, that's the reason why I'm not putting it in there because that's one of the ones I think that has the biggest chance of being delayed if out of all of the ones um and then uh Scream which is coming out next week or Scream 5 is uh, I, I'm planning on calling it uh uh, I almost included it on here, but I was like, since it's out next week, I'm just going to go ahead and give it an honorable mention, because I am really looking forward to that one. Uh, Morbius, which was delayed to April 1st, I'm looking forward to that one quite a bit. Sonic the Hedgehog 2, uh, I'm looking forward to that one, and uh, 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 quite a bit as well. And um, there was one other one that I was... Oh yeah, Black Panther Wakanda Forever. I'm really curious about that one. I, I don't know how much I'm looking forward to it, but I'm curious to see what they do with it and everything. So uh, those are my main honorable mentions. So I'm going to go ahead and get going into the list. Coming in at number 10 is Lightyear. This is the uh, origin story for Buzz Lightyear, the the man who inspired the toy in the Toy Story franchise and I'm really curious to see what this movie is like um, Chris Evans is taking over doing the voice of Buzz since he, he's not the toy version and I'm kinda mixed on that because Chris Evans is one of those actors I'm just not not a big fan of I love him as Captain America and I, I like him in a few other things but I'm not really a big fan of him but I'm curious to see what what happens with this movie and everything the trailer looked pretty interesting and uh, if nothing else it'll I'm sure it'll be a great looking animated movie because Pixar always delivers on their animation and I, I'm sure it'll be good though I don't think Pixar would be doing it if they didn't have a good story for it and everything out I'm curious to see what they do with it uh, we already did have a Buzz Lightyear TV show back in the early 2000s it was uh, that I thought was what it was supposed to be based on, but this is Pixar's turn of doing it, I guess. Maybe maybe this is like the story of the guy who inspired the the show or something. I, I don't really know. Uh, I'm just curious to see what, what this movie does and everything. The trailer doesn't give away too much, so I'm just curious what, we, what we're going to get in this one. So Lightyear is number 10, and number 9 is... Thor Love and Thunder. Um, I absolutely loved Taika Waititi's work on Thor Ragnarok and getting him back to do this movie I'm really excited and curious to see what they do with it and everything. Out of all the main Avenger characters that have gotten a fourth movie, Thor is one of the ones that I think deserved a fourth one the most because really the third one was the best movie of his and getting, getting another one with Taika Waititi back and stuff. I'm, I'm really curious to see how they do it. Uh, and the fact they're bringing Jane Foster back, I'm curious to see how it works in this movie, how her, how Natalie Portman's chemistry with him and the, the, like her performance and stuff is going to be in this movie after her not being in a movie with him and stuff for almost 10 years. I'm, I'm curious to see what it's like and everything. So Thor Love and Thunder is number 9. And number 8 is... The Batman. This movie is already like super, super hyped. Everybody is talking about how this is going to be the best Batman movie ever. I don't know that it'll be that good, um, but I do think it'll be a really great movie. It looks awesome. Robert Pattinson, I have 
no doubt is going to be good as Batman. He, he's a really great actor, and I've always liked him, even back when he did Twilight and stuff. I liked him in those movies, too. Uh, I kind of have a soft spot for Twilight. Um, but I think he's evolved as an actor. He's become really, really great in movies like The Lighthouse and Good Time. He was really great in those movies, so I'm sure he's going to be great as Batman, too. And uh, the... One that I'm actually the most excited about in the movie is uh, Colin Farrell as the Penguin, who uh, I'm not a big fan of Colin Farrell. Uh, I've never really had anything against him, but I'm just not a huge fan of him. But I think he, he is going to do a really awesome job as the Penguin. He just looks amazing in here. And Paul Dano playing the Riddler, I, I love that too because he's like a really underrated actor. And I love like the vibes that the trailer has given us. It kind of kind of gives you a Saw vibe to it. And I love that like the mystery aspect of it and that Batman's going to be a detective and stuff and the brutality that he's going to be giving on on these characters and stuff. I, I'm really looking forward to it and everything. So the Batman is number eight and number seven is. Turning Red. This is another Pixar movie that is supposed to be out in a couple months. Uh, I've seen the trailer a couple times, and it looks like it's going to be really funny. It's like this this girl, every time she gets really angry or emotional, she turns into this gigantic red panda and everything. It looks, looks like it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, it, I'm curious to see how this one turns out. Uh, and everything. I love when Pixar does their original movies, and they've been on a pretty good streak here in the last couple years. They haven't really had any sequels. Lightyear is the first kind of spin-off that they've done since Toy Story 4, as, a, as far as like non-original movies. So uh, they've been kind of on a streak of doing original stuff lately, and this one looks really good um, and really fun and interesting. I'm curious to see how it turns out. So. Uh, Turning Red is number seven, and number six is Nope. Uh, this is a Jordan Peele movie, and that's literally pretty much all I know about it. I've seen the poster, and I know it has Daniel Kaluuya and Kiki Palmer in it, and really, that's all I know about it. I don't know anything about the story. I haven't tried to look it up to find out. Uh, I'm kind of, kind of trying to do like I did with Us, where I just don't. Uh, go in knowing anything about it and everything. I did the same thing with Get Out. I didn't know anything about either of those movies except I'd seen the posters and stuff. So I'm trying to do that with this one too, where I don't know anything about it. Um, especially since it's going to, I think, from Universal. And Universal is one of the worst companies at doing trailers because they, they love to spoil their movies and their trailers. and everything but th this one I'm, I'm very curious on I love both of Jordan Peele's previous movies and I can't wait to see what he has in store for us with this movie that the poster is really really weird looking kind of has some 80s vibes to it so uh, I hope it hope it's hope it's entertaining so nope is number six and number five is the North Man from Robert Eggers this is a, a Viking movie that looks really really great I, I've been trying to avoid the trailers and stuff I'd seen a poster of it but I was trying to avoid the trailers ended up seeing it the other day when I was at the movie theater and I was like ah, I guess oh, they didn't show too much and stuff so at least at least they didn't do that but it, it looks like it's gonna be a great movie I love Robert Eggers previous movies especially the witch and uh, he's reuniting with uh, uh, Willem Dafoe and Anya Taylor-Joy so I'm curious to see how their roles are in this movie and, and the trailer looks really great it looks like a really interesting movie and I, I can't wait to see it and I hope that it doesn't get delayed it, it's being released in April and it's that's a pretty stacked month already because you got Morbius just got moved there and Sonic the Hedgehog 2 is coming out that month and uh, there was something else coming out that month that was really big so uh, I hope that it doesn't doesn't get messed up but I, I'm really looking forward to this movie so the North Man is number five and number four is Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness uh, this is probably the MCU movie I'm the most looking forward to now that No Way Home is out um, until we get find out more about when we're getting more Spider-Man movies but that 
this is directed by Sam Raimi, who directed the Spider-Man trilogy, trilogy that is like my favorite superhero trilogy of all time. So, getting to see him return to the superhero genre has me excited enough as it is, and everything. And I'm not the biggest fan of the first Doctor Strange movie, but I'm very excited for this movie. That uh, the, the trailers look great. You're getting Wanda back in here, possibly becoming the villain of the movie, which is going to be insane. Um, I've been hearing a lot of speculation about different characters that could pop up in here um, from previous Marvel iterations like the uh, Fantastic Four and some of the X-Men characters. And there might even be uh, just guessing maybe Ghost Rider. It'd be awesome if they got Nicolas Cage to come back in here. I don't know that they will. They probably won't, but if they do have him like as a cameo, that'd be kind of cool. Um, but I, I, there's been rumors that uh, Hugh Jackman and Patrick Stewart are going to be returning as uh, Wolverine and, and Professor X. That'd be be kind of interesting. I, I also hope that maybe we'll get to get appearance of Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield again uh, in this. I think that'd be awesome to get to see them in here. Uh, but yeah, so I, I'm really looking forward to this movie. I'm, really curious about it. I've seen the one trailer. I don't know if I'm going to watch any more trailers for it. I, I might. And Disney's really good about not spoiling too much in the Marvel trailer, so I'll probably end up watching the other trailers, but I am looking forward to this one quite a bit. So, it's number four. And number three is... Halloween Ends. I, I absolutely loved Halloween Kills. I, I know that movie was really mixed on the fan reception. Some people loved it, some people hated it. I can understand the criticism that that movie got, but I actually really like this one. I think that one being uh, the middle chapter, kind of, they kind of wanted to get uh, on with the fan service and and have the most brutal kills and stuff in that one, and focus more on the story in this one. And I think think that's how the trilogy should go. The first one set it set it up really well. The second one has the most action. The third one be a good way to conclude the story hopefully it is a good way i know jamie lee curtis has said that it's going to make a lot of people mad and everything so i have no idea what they're doing with this movie but i really hope they they do it, it good enough because so far both of the movies in this trilogy have been really great and i've loved both of them so hopefully this one will be really great too um i, I really enjoyed it i, I kind of have speculation of what's going to happen in this one i, I think Lori is gonna die for sure and I'm betting Michael might die too um, I don't know that he will but uh, that or everybody's gonna die like all the main characters are gonna die and Michael's gonna somehow survive and be be just get away or something I, I don't know I'm, I'm curious to see what they do with this uh, and everything but Halloween ends is number three and number two is Jurassic World Dominion. Now, I absolutely loved the first Jurassic World movie. And I thought Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom was just okay. Not not super great. Uh, I think it kind of has the same things going for it like the Halloween Kills did for a lot of people. It, it just, the way it left off and stuff on the cliffhanger and the movie just kind of took its time getting to the point and stuff at the end of it. I think that it, it could have been done differently but uh i'm looking forward to seeing the dinosaurs and humans interacting and stuff now that the dinosaurs are stuck on the mainland and the fact that we're getting the original characters from the first movie back in here uh, sam neill and laura dern and jeff goldblum are all three coming back to play their characters from the first movie is awesome i'm really hoping we'll get some surprise appearances from other characters from the franchise now uh, Except for maybe the Kirby's from from Jurassic Park 3. I kind of hope we don't see them, but it'd be kind of cool if we got to see like Lexi and Tim, and maybe uh, see Ian's daughter from and Julian Moore's character from The Lost World. Maybe bring Vince Vaughn back. I doubt we'll get that lucky, but I'm curious to see what they do with this movie and everything. And it's going to be a lot of fun. I hope. Uh, hopefully, this one will be more on the same level of the first Jurassic World and not Fallen Kingdom, but I guess we'll see. Um, but this is a franchise, every time there's a movie, this franchise will always make my top 10 of the 
most anticipated movies, whether they're good or bad. I, I love watching new Jurassic movies and everything. It's kind of like the Fast and the Furious franchise. They have their ups and downs, but I always am hyped and excited to see a new one. And I could say the same about Star Wars, too. Uh, but, yeah, I, I love the Jurassic Park and Jurassic World movies, so I'm looking forward to this one a lot. So, it's number two. And my number one most anticipated movie of the year is... The Fablemans. This is a semi-autobiography movie that Steven Spielberg is doing. Um, he's directing it, and uh, it's going to be about his childhood, except the characters' names are going to be changed. Uh, but, you know, like, the main character is supposed to be him, and uh, Michelle Williams is playing a character that's going to be like its mom, and Seth Rogen is supposed to be in here playing like someone that's like his uncle, and it's got a, a lot of other really good names in it. I don't remember who all's going to be in it, but I'm really looking forward to this one. As a big fan of Spielberg uh, and everything, I'm just really curious to see what he does with this movie and how it turns out. And um, I've always been fascinated by him as a director. He's always been one of my favorite directors and everything. I finally got have caught up on seeing every single movie he's directed and stuff. So this one is one that I'm very, very excited for. I know it's kind of a personal movie to him, which... Uh, he, I love it when he does it, movies that are really special to him. Like That's part of why I think West Side Story turned out as good as it was, is it was something that really meant something to him and everything. So I'm really looking forward to seeing how this movie turns out and everything. So it's definitely uh, my number one most anticipated movie of the year.